future presentation. Enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to the feature presentation podcast presented by the Movie Bar, the movie podcast exploring the timeless classics that have stood the test of time and those that haven't. Let's start the show. I am your host, John, and I am joined by my best friend and co-host. I'm Justin. Yeah, you were worried. This week we're discussing 1984's verifiable stinker. Angel, which is celebrating its 40th anniversary this year. <laughs> oh, how are you doing this week, Justin? <laughs> well, eh, it's a week. I'm here. I'm I'm not really sick anymore, so I guess that's good. Well, that's good. Took you long enough. Yeah, I was, I was getting mad. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm not ready to spend the rest of my life sick every day. <laughs> How's the weather out there in Washington State? It's rainy. Apparently, it might snow at the end of this week. Oh, how special! We had a we had a nor'easter yesterday. Ooh, that's fun! Ha ha. And now we're getting a. This 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 is why I left. <laughs> so, because after nor'easter, there's really only other nor'easters or a blizzard. And oh, no. I'm glad I don't have to deal with that crap. No, 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 no. So where I am, we got about three to five inches of snow yesterday. And of course, the majority the majority of that came was when I had to drive Hunter. We had to go to Walmart and then meet up with his mom. So of course, fucking zero visibility, fucking snow coming down like a bitch. And the minute I pulled in the driveway, it fucking cleared up again. That's how that works. But now they're saying that Wednesday is supposed to be 50 to 70 mile gust winds and rain, which means everything's going to melt. There's going to be fucking flooding everywhere. Mm. Yes, that's going to suck. And uh, that's the good thing about the snow out here is after it snows, it's there for a couple of days and then it either gets washed away by rain or just melts. Yeah, well. I don't do well with wind storms. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Two tree, actually three trees now. Had a third one hit the back fence two weeks ago. So, yeah, my life sucks. But now for a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, Mary Poppins star Glennis Johns, who sang Sandholms. Sondheims. S- Sondheim, send in the clowns, passed away at 100 years old. That's a milestone achievement there within itself. But uh, yeah, it is. Uh, but you know, we also have uh, Caddyshack and Tron stars. Cindy Morgan passed away at 69. Um, and lastly, uh, Speed Racer and. He was in one of the Indiana Jones, too, after Christian Oliver and his two daughters were killed in a Caribbean plane crash yesterday, which would have been um, the, the 7th. I thought, I thought it was the day before, but... Oh, uh, yeah, it was, actually. Yeah, it was. It was on Saturday. <laughs> so, uh, condolences to everybody's uh, family and friends and fans. Uh, that one sucks, though. The two daughters yeah. were killed, too. Yep, that's rough. Any new trailers we see this week? <laughs> no, I did not see any new trailers this week. No, we have two we're going to follow up on next week. Um, but let's... I apparently sent you one and didn't know I sent you one. So Yeah. Um, let, let's discuss that first one, just the, the premise of it itself. So with all these um, Disney characters are cartoon characters going into the public domain. Winnie the Pooh last year, Bambi, and of course, the Grinch. This year, they got a big one, Mickey. Mm, Steamboat Steamboat Willie. Willie Mickey. Yes, sir. So, of course, the day it goes into public domain, not one, but two trailers dropped for two separate movies, one focusing on Steamboat Willie. And the other one, Mickey Mouse. 
Yeah, I mean, you had to see it coming. Um, yeah, I'm glad it's coming. I think it'll be fun. I'm Bambi. Bambi is next also on the slate, so. Oh, there's a whole bunch of stuff coming. Yeah. Thank you for that. Sorry. I could hear that. I mean, that was a weird. That was. Um... Oh, I know what it was. <laughs> I think everybody knows what it was. Yeah. Especially no, that was... you immediately look down if anybody's watching. <laughs> I was looking to see what it was. It was my Monopoly Go notification. I started playing that yesterday. All right, Justin. What have you watched? Believe it or not, I've actually watched movies. I, Are you is, shocked? I am. Your list so, is probably bigger than mine. I watched... Um, Ace Ventura, both Pet Detective and When Nature Calls, because when they're on, it's you know that's just natural. Yeah. Uh, but also while they were on, I watched Beverly Hills Cop, one, two, and three. Oh wow! Um, which, you know, those like originally I've only ever really watched them, you know. However, I come across them you know one at a time probably never in order having watched them now like actually in order kind of back to back like that man is that a steep drop off from two to three (laughs) man does it just fall differently with his character and all that so it'll be interesting to see what four brings um does this make you excited for four i mean i even though it is different i still like the third one yeah um but i mean yeah i mean it's got you know judge reinhold in it taggart's in it and it'll be it it should be good yeah um then i i did watch angel oh good Um, and after that i did finally watch the retirement plan nicholas cage on hulu on his birthday too I did really like that movie. That was yeah. good. there. There was parts where the script writing was just terrible. Yeah, I can't really fault the actors for that. It made the scene bad just the way they had to talk and to, you know kind of marble their way through it. Um, but overall, I thought that was that was a pretty good movie. Yeah. I enjoyed it. It's um, on my to watch list, but uh. It was good. I also watched Office Space. Office Space oh. On. I swear if they take my tape one more time. You break your feet down. Um, but yeah, it was a eventful week of background movies. So before I get into my list, there was something I wanted to talk about real quickly. I forgot in the I forgot the right time. already forgot again. No. <laughs> So, the Golden Globes were last night, and they, I watched a clip of Jim Gaffigan coming out. Oh, his pedophile joke? No. Okay. (laughs) How the fuck are they making a movie about Pop-Tarts? I've heard nothing about this until today. So. I don't know if it's like, like the Emoji movie, or if it's like historical about how pop tarts came to be. The way it sounds like it's so it, the film is called Unfrosted the pop tart yeah. story. Um it's directed by um uh, Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah, that takes me out of it. Which he will also star in. Oh, that but then the cast list Hugh Grant, Melissa McCarthy, Amy Schumer, James Marsden, Jim Gaffigan, Christian Slater, Thomas Lennon, Jack McBriar, um, Cedric Yarbrough. So obviously it's going to be a comedy. Yep. And... From what they say, it is 
Um, I can't remember. It's coming to Netflix. I know that. Uh, and it's about Post and Kellogg's working together to change the breakfast. Ish. Ish, yeah. But like, that's fucking crazy. Yeah, no, I'm not a fan of Jerry Seinfeld, so I'm not really all that keen on that. Yeah. It was supposed to be re released in 2023, but it's obviously been pushed back. So it must be coming out if they're announcing that he's coming up in an upcoming Netflix movie. Yeah. So, yeah, I just, I just like. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, yeah, I don't. Um, so I watched South Park, bigger, longer, and uncut. Blank it up, blank it I forgot how funny that movie fucking was. Oh yeah, that is a classic. And like. It hits a milestone this year, so we need to work that in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think 4th of July week. There's nothing better than this movie for the 4th of July, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I watched Angel. Then I watched um, The Wolf of Wall Street. And tonight I watched Clerks. And Clerks 2, so that means tomorrow I'm going to watch Clerks 3 and Mall Rats and continue on my View Askew um, adventure. Clerks is celebrating an anniversary this year also. So, it's a 94 movie. So, we're going to have to watch that. What? You're just staring at me like I'm fucking dumb. Yeah, well, I don't, I, it's, I, I don't know that I've ever watched that movie all the way through. No. Clerks? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Well, I was quite, quite surprised to see that they. So, wrestlers Matt Cardona and Brian Myers started a figure line, which is Major Bendy's, which is like the Bendham figures that we had growing up. Back in the early nineties, yeah. and they announced yesterday that. They're stepping like normally they cover wrestlers or managers yeah. or something like but now they're doing a Jay and Silent Bob from the movie Clerk, so they're gonna be in black and white and I just I found that amazing and that's I was like shit, I haven't watched Clerks in a while and so fun fun. Yeah. Yeah. I mean like I I like Jay and Silent Bob strike back, like small rats, chasing angels, yeah. I just I don't clerks just I don't know. It's too metaphorious. No, it's just too uh, never really watched it. All right. Well, I think it's now time for the feature presentation. Yay. Her name is Angel. She's unlike any high school student you've ever met. Are you having difficulty making friends? I'm on top of the honors list. There's more to life than getting straight A's. Her only friends are on the streets. Her only chance is on her own. You're young, attractive, healthy. You're swimming around in a toilet bowl. I was alone! Where's your mom, Angel? One day I came home from school and she was gone. Just that note, a hundred dollar bill. I just put on some sexy clothes and high heels and went out and made a living. Everything in life has a price on it, Angel. Somewhere down the line, you're gonna have to pay. It's my life. Angel, her two worlds are about to collide. Ah! Remind me never to get murdered. <laughs> 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 
angel. It's her choice, her chance, and her life. So this week we are covering the 40th anniversary of Angel. Um, an honor student turns to prostitution so that she can pay her tuition at an exclusive California high school. The fuck kind of description is that? But then also the same one that on the TV, the Lulu. <laughs> yeah. Um, it is rated R, has a runtime of one hour and 34 minutes, was released on January 13th, 1984. Ooh, brother's birthday. The year after yeah. I was born. That's your brother's birthday, January 13th? Do you know that? Dude, I fucking, I'm lucky I ever have my own birthday. Um... It, it did have several sequels we'll talk about. Had a box office of 17.5 million US dollars. You mentioned Just, that director. Oh, uh, it was directed by Robert Vincent O'Neill and was distributed by New World Pitches and produced by Donald D. Donald P. Borchers. Boucher's. Um, it is currently. Oh, Currently streaming on free for Voodoo, Pluto TV, and Tubi, as well as for purchase on Voodoo. I believe it was seven ninety nine when I bought it. Uh, sorry. Cast of, we'll call them characters. We've got Donna Wilkes as Molly Angel Stewart. Cliff Gordon as Lieutenant Andrews. Susan Tyrell as Sally Mo Mosler. And Sean as Marvin Walker slash May. Rory Calhoun as Kit Carson, John Deal as the killer, Blaine Giftos as Patricia Allen, Stephen M. Porter as Charlie Yo-Yo Charlie, Donna McDaniel as Crystal, and Graham McGavin as Lana. Okay. I am going to let you just go off. I mean, if this was just, like, First off, you forget watching a movie this old, just how old people looked back then. Yes. Like, she's supposed to be 15, and I don't think I look that old and I have gray hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's see. Let's see how old Donna Wilkes was. Keep going. So there was that. Um, and a whole lot of this premise of this movie just hurts that it's even a thing like i get that everybody's story is different everybody has their own hardships and this shit happened for some maybe somewhere but it's still a little fucking bonkers um i mean the fact that she's just walking down the street with a gun and people are just kind of like walking off to the side like i i, I I don't think that would have been that easy even back then. I'm pretty sure somebody would have done something. Somebody would have been early and put that goddamn gun down. But you got to remember, this is Hollywood at night. I don't care. And Donna Wilkes was actually 25 at the time of filming this. Yep. Yeah. Uh, well, she looked older than that, even. I'm sorry. That's job. I'm sorry. That's just the way it was back then. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to insult anybody. It's just the way it was. It's just the way it looks. I'm sorry. <laughs> but so, I mean, yeah. I mean, it obviously, rough in some points. Real goddamn rough at some points. <laughs> so, I had never heard of this up until probably about three years ago. And I was watching Joe Bob, The Last Driving with Joe Bob Briggs. And this was one of the movies. And I was like, high school had turned prostitute. Oh, this is going to be entertaining. And like, it was so dumb that it was good. I can't even tell. I mean, John yes, sir. Like, I know him from a lot of things. He often plays weirder characters. What the hell was with that egg? That he, like, drilled a little hole in with it. And then he just 
Mr. Crushed it. What? He's obviously a fucking weird cat. What? Okay, so let's let's talk about him. As he is the hooker killer. I mean, where was the inspiration for that? I mean, I love when he's taking a shower in front of the window over a fucking bucket and he's scraping all the fucking dead body cells off. And yeah, but, I mean, like what, what, what? Like it was it supposed to be symbolic? He did it in front of a picture of his mom. So he's eating her egg. Is that just him? And then ah, and I, I don't. Stupid. Well, we never get a backstory on him. No. But he's one would just fucking nuts. One would assume that probably his mother was a hooker or something, and I. Uh, but he's a fucking twisted cat. And, you know, on Hollywood Boulevard throughout the night, there's a bunch of street performers. You got Charlie Yo-Yo, Yo-Yo Charlie, Kit Carlson, um, um, you know, and then you have all the hookers walking the street. He's strategically picking hookers that he's going to kill. Well, yeah, most killers do. And he doesn't just, like, stab him. He, like, it's a fucking bloodbath. Yeah. And so then you find out you have Molly, also known as Angel, who is kind of looked out for by um, May. Yeah. Boy, was she attractive, huh? Um, and as well as you love them with a little extra, don't you? <laughs> no, but you know, May, Kit Carson, and a few of the other hookers. I'm sorry, ladies of the night, be politically correct here. And sex work is real work, as well as um, the uh, the lady at the apartment building, the man building manager, yeah. Uh-huh. I forget her name. I forget which one Solly. she was. Solly? Yeah. Okay, so. And, you know, as her friends get killed, that's when shit starts. You see the change in Angel. <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, this is 1984. You got to take everything. With those, you know, grain of salt and yes, those colored glasses and all that stuff. I mean, you would hope that if the cop, first of all, he already knows she's underage and on the street, so why he's not doing something already? It's, I get it. Yeah, it's, it, there's lots of them, but you know, still. Anyway, um, it's just it was just rough i mean how could she hide the parental units being gone she did pretty good at it if you ask me but like if if the mother left three years ago when she was 12 yep she wouldn't even have been in high school yet yeah, but look at how so, far she came. She got herself into a nice high school. How did she get into that high school? She probably forged signatures. But at some point, there's always a face-to-face. With Dude, parents. this was the and 80s. It was a different it, time. But still, it's a private school thing. The The teacher coming down to the house, like, that was... A weird interaction, well, she, to say the least. Well, she found the gun in the locker at this point. Right, but that should have been handled. That that would have been... But then again, it, this was the early 80s. It's still, you'd think that that would have garnered a call to the principal's office. I think that the teacher had so much respect for Molly... That she was kind of looking out for her. Yeah, That's my, and, and she wanted to help her. I mean, and then to find out that she was a prostitute from that other student. 
now like I think that showed like she wanted to go talk to her parents before getting her in trouble because she's a straight A student. She's a good kid. You know, and then you find out that when like she goes up into the apartment, May or Marvin is already up there pretending to be the mother and the teacher saw right through that. <laughs> well, see, I wonder why. But you know, you know, and they, you well, know, they, they had something to do with the voice. <laughs> yeah, you know, they wanted to help Molly, and they're looking out for Molly. And shortly after the teacher leaves, we see our killer again, mm-hmm. who's now a dressed as a Buddhist monk. And Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. <laughs> Like, I think he looked more scary with the bald head than he did fucking beforehand. Yeah. But he ends up killing May. I mean, yeah, we missed a lot here. Um. Oh, oh, we're going to get back to it. We're going to, you know, that's just kind of the flow of this conversation was going. So, you know, but like the Molly's evolution throughout the movie. That goes back to when you said she's walking down the street with the gun. And she just on her. She just wants to. Her aiming could have been a little better. Just saying. Well, I mean, everybody. You know, it is what it is. It's not that easy to. But let's talk about Soli Moser, the building attendant. She's a fucking character within herself. Well, yeah. They all were. I mean, May was quite the character. <laughs> and fucking Kit Carson. You know, a former uh, famous TV stuntman, you know, um, cowboy. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, li- I like that, uh, you know, Molly would hide the, the painting that Solly did behind the table and pull it up. And <laughs> pull it up on the door. Knocking on the door. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, yeah, no, she was quite the character. Quite the character. I like the May's final words. But one the last sight on this earth would be your ugly face. <laughs> yeah, and I th- I think they were dating, honestly. Well, I mean, just saying. Each other somewhat. But so as as Molly's kind of progressing through school and then working the nights and she's doing her homework and she's a straight A student. She's got a lot of drive and ambition. I'll give you that. Well, bad time in your life. You don't need a lot of sleep. Yeah, that's true. Some, some don't. Yeah, There's some don't. Sleep, but I mean, it's fucking a die for them. But then eventually, this boy keeps asking her out. She says no. You know, other people are trying to like get in her pants. Oh, then they know. Start out just, you know, it started out just you know with the. That one nerd and then the um that jock there who thought yeah. he could have anybody. That was but, a great shut his ass down. And so so then they the jock ends up seeing her out walking the streets. And if they're always cruising Hollywood Boulevard, how did they not notice this before? Hmm. One of those things. But they end up pulling her into the car. They're going to rape her. But she has a fucking gun. Kind of got to. Yeah. I'm surprised it took her that long to have one. Yeah. So after um, they kind of threatened her, she threatened them. She pulls the gun, gets them all out of the car, and the big tough jock wets his pants. Well, you would too if a gun was if a gun was fired right across your goddamn nose inside of the vehicle. <laughs> yeah, and so then, of course, being the asshole that he is, he, he's he's running around saying like, "Oh yeah, we all tapped her and all that shit, and she's a prostitute." Which then, of course, the nerdy kid's like, "I have twenty bucks." <laughs> yeah. That's and that's when her world kind of came crashing down. And 
Yeah, but, once high school kids of any 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 era find out something like that, yeah, you're pretty well done. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of funny when she's like, my, my mom thinks that I'm too young to date. But I'm not too young to walk the streets of Hollywood. Mm. Uh, I mean, it's just like, you can't make this movie today. No. You can't. I'm shocked it's even on these free streamers these days. Um, I'm shocked that it had so many fucking sequels. I'm not. So, let, let's talk about the sequels. So, in 1985, so a year, oh, a year later, we have Avenging Abel. Avenging we're, not, we're not, no. I know what you're thinking. No. No. <laughs> we're but not we, covering that next year. So we had Avenging Angel starring Betsy Russell, and I've seen it. It's just like the first one, except Solly has, Solly has a kid now. She found the baby. Somebody okay. left the baby behind. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, then we have uh, Angel 3, the final chapter in 1988 starring... But was it the final chapter? Uh, well, this one was starring Mitzi Capture. Um, each one did less well at the box office. And then there was a failed pilot for a TV spinoff, which was a straight to video as Angel 4 Undercover in 1993, starring Darlene Vogel, which was non canonical to the previous films. So I've seen two and three. Much like any movie, they couldn't keep the same fucking main character. It was all Molly Angel Stewart. But different actresses. But Kit Carlson comes back, Sonny Moser comes back, uh, Solly Moser, Lieutenant Andrews. Um, I think Charlie Yo-Yo's in there, or Yo-Yo Charlie, whatever his name is. You know. And they're all just helping her kill all these people. I believe the second one, let me see if I can find the synopsis for the, I think the second one, the lieutenant gets killed. And, but now she's in college. So when Andrews is, is killed by a brutal gang, oh, hold on. Um, Molly, former prostitute, has managed to leave the street life with the help of Lieutenant Andrews. She studies law and leads a normal life. And when Andrews is killed by um, a brutal gang, she returns to the street as Angels to find his killer. So now she's a law student. But she's going back to the streets to get them killers. Yes. She's going to sleep with a bunch of guys just to get information. But you, you never really see her sleep with anybody. No, they just imply it. Because you can't. They said she was 15. You can't show shit like that on TV. Or in the movie theater. That is illegal. For a reason. She was 25. It doesn't matter. They were saying she was portraying a 15-year-old. So, Angel 3, the final chapter. Now she's a photographer... Poses as a hooker to free her woman, her, to free her sister from a woman's white slave drug ring. She has a sister. Apparently so. Probably by choice. Um, although there was that, I guess they, well, there was that one scene of boobies in the uh, that locker room. There was that the high school. Yeah, there was a lot of boobies in this movie at the high school. Yeah. So wait a minute. So they're showing all these high school boobs like it's fucking nothing, but yet you can't imply that the 15-year-old is that's I a problem. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so now Angel 4 Undercover. 
Molly is now a police photographer in a relationship with a DJ. Her old friend from the streets gets in touch with her. She's in town with a band and hot for the lead singer. Her friend gets murdered and Molly turns up to the scene to photograph the body. So Molly again assumes the identity of Angel and hits the club scenes in search for the killer. This time as a groupie rather than a prostitute. So she's moved up in life, gone from a prostitute to, to, to a groupie. Yeah, it was pretty, that sounds pretty bad. Um, yeah, I was just thinking about is that lineup scene mm. and how particularly terrible that one was handled too. Come on. Look at that rookie cop. His gun is still holstered. The minute they fucking say that. Oh, yeah, he's going to catch that because they didn't fucking handcuff any of these idiots when they lined them up, you know, because. God forbid you line up suspects and handcuff them. I mean, come on. Of course, if you have somebody and you're you're trying to get, you know, an eyewitness testimony to if they were involved in a crime, you should handcuff them because they're going to try to get out. And then you should not have a rookie come in with coffee for everybody with a gun. Holster. Holster. Belt. And yeah. then he fucking shoots up the police station. Oh, How many... yeah. And everybody just runs away. They all get out of the way. And he, like, shoots one cop who, you know, jumps up over the table and all that stuff. Because, holy damn, are those some powerful bullets. Um, yeah. So. I, it was pretty. It, it was pretty devastating. This was your cheesy B, B movie from the 80s. I mean, and it was one of those, like, so. That cop walks in. They're telling them to walk out. Cop tells lieutenant about gun on holster. And at the same time, she recognizes the shoes the guy was wearing. And she gets up and yells, and he grabs the gun and starts shooting at the. It's like, <laughs> wow. And he proceeds to make it out of the police station. Yes. Grabs a hostage who he just knocks out and dumps behind a fence near some cars. So then he finds out that where Molly lives, and that's when we get the the brawl between... You get that montage of him cutting his head, hair. Cutting his hair, and then the police officer that's sitting outside of Molly's residence is notices that a... Um, a monk has gone rogue and sneaks in and the police det uh, the detective follows ends up getting killed and then goes into he how the hell did he find out where she lived uh, i don't know but so i don't remember it didn't do a good job of really hooking me in there, you know. <laughs> but, I mean, that was one hell of a fight scene. Yeah, they get thrown around pretty good. They fucking broke everything. I have never seen a back of a couch fall down like that before. Totally. Happens all the time. You know, and then when they're in the kitchen, he hits, uh, she hits him with a, he hits her with a pan. And the fucking knife flying everywhere. And then they jump on the, the princess canopy bed and the canopy falls down and you just see movement. Stabbing in the blood. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, Solly comes up and sees May laying on the bed bloody and he makes the joke, as you said earlier, about the last thing I want to see is your ugly mug. But, he, you know, don't let, don't let Molly see me. Don't let Angel see me. Well, fucking Angel sees her. Well, yeah. No, Angel walked out. Angel left. Angel left and got a gun. Yeah, she got, got the gun. gun. She just up and I'm out. And walking down the street, spots him. Uh, yeah, after she walks by. So, Angel, look out. Yeah. Horribly Charlie, shooting. Yo, 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 Charlie. Yo, yo, yeah. Charlie saved your life. Yeah. And she Horrible wildly shooting. shoots at anything that moves. He jumps in the back of a fucking El Camino. I think it's dragged out and beaten for a quick second. <laughs> yeah. And 
So then, of course, Lieutenant Andrews runs out, tries to find her, tries to find him. They start shooting back and forth. Kit Carson gets involved. <laughs> Isn't there one scene where he's on, on the back of a motorcycle? <laughs> but I missed that. When he was I going up thought, down the street looking. Oh, I, saw, I just remember that's the part where he's at the top of the stairs. He's in the back and forth with the, the, the Andrews there. And then, like, Andrews, like, there's nowhere near him, nowhere near him. Then he shoots the handrail next to the killer. And the killer's like, bah, throws down his gun and it jumps off the back. <laughs> yeah, and he wasn't even hiding behind anything. He was like, yeah. <laughs> the Matrix in 1984. Yeah. So, you know. To wrap up the movie, eventually, um, you know, Kit Carson gets Spoiler shot. Alert. Spoiler alert. Yep. Because I know everybody's going to rush out and watch this movie after fucking this yeah, riveting episode. This is the thing that cancels the movie, or the feature presentation right here, this movie. Um, after being shot, Kit Carson gets the final shot in. It kills him. And... Angel's yeah. life is torn upside down. If that wizard video gets recommended along with Katie Vick, uh, this one was given this material. Ooh, good God, this could get recommended with those Paul videos of him insulting Japanese culture, the suicide forest, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that 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 was a, a shocker when it was like your video was recommended from these sites, and that's where we got the viewership from was from those sites. So somebody out there is fucking Googling Katie Vick WWE storyline and like, oh shit, the wizard? Oh! Damn, I gotta watch. Oh, I gotta see this. Let me finish this Katie Vick necrophilia video. And for those of you that don't know, in 2002, the WWE did a very bad angle where one of their characters, Kane, was imitated by another character, Triple H. And said that he had sex with his girlfriend, Katie Vick, in the funeral home after she was killed in a car accident. Not the best moment for the WWE at the time. But anyways. Probably didn't need to rehash that whole thing right there, but okay. Yeah, probably. <laughs> People are going to be like, fuck them. People who Patriot. knew would have known. Yeah. Those who didn't could have remained blissfully unaware. Well, we, we keep things fresh. Now the they're going to go look up that video and they're going to cancel our asses. You do. This is the episode <laughs> that does it. All right. So runtime, one hour and 34 minutes. Your thoughts. Yeah, I, this was pretty bad, even for being a pretty bad 80s movie. Um. But I mean, it, this is this is a kind of topic that you can't really talk about nowadays, like this. So, nope. I have no plan on ever watching it again, or any of the sequels. And if you try to make me, I will be sick that week. So you think there's no <laughs> I'll chance of will your ass? <laughs> so, <laughs> So you think there's no chance for a reboot of this movie? Not really. I not, think with a not as it is. No. A few it, things it, would have it, to be it changed. It has to be a lot of changes, probably. But I could see like an 18 year old high school student working as a prostitute to make yeah. money. There's been those other movies, but I mean, it's just 15 from 20. You know, they're not gonna. Yeah. Put that out there. All right. What's your overall opinion of this movie, Justin? Oh, my overall opinion? It's a stanker. <laughs> it was pretty bad. I enjoyed it. Like, so I mean, I just I I the the like again, like the killer, like I just I I didn't get most of it. I get he's supposed to be crazy, but like, I just, I guess I just don't like that 80s over exaggerated crazy. Yeah. That, yeah. Egg, that egg thing is going to live in my head rent free for the rest of my life. 
Every time you see an egg, that's what you're gonna think of. Is this oh, fucking no. Kill. No. He's gonna suck the yolk out of that like a goddamn hoover. No, thank you. Uh, so you you don't think this movie would hold up at all today? I, no, I, I don't think it's. I don't think that it's going to all of a sudden just get a whole bunch of views. No, I don't uh, think anybody's going to be like, "Oh no, I watched it. That was pretty terrific." Well, if you guys do happen to check it out because of this, let us know down in the comments what you thought. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually eager to know. Uh, I, but I, I enjoyed it like the first time I watched. I've watched it three times now in three years. I do need to go revisit two and three. There is a, there is a Blu-ray box set. Movies with boobies in it just never ceases. Could have been worse. Could have been Donkey Punch again. All right. To the ratings. Uh, I'll be nice and give it a one. A one. <laughs> I... I give it four reels. Oh, oh that hurt. <laughs> like, I just, oh. like normally with bad acting in bad movies, I can at least enjoy the bad acting in the bad movies. I couldn't even really enjoy it in this movie. Did you have a favorite scene at all, though? Not really. My favorite I mean, scene is is the fight in the in the apartment between May and the killer. Yeah, I mean that's pretty good. Um, I, there's just so much of it that was just so bad. Like when she bought the gun there at the fast food place from the dude, the waiter there. The fucking way May was. No, no. Well, May's just trying to look out for her. I mean, there was a few quitty joke, you know. Yeah, there was a couple okay jokes and like him may and what's the the, the solly they, their interaction when the teacher <laughs> showed up was very good with oh, the, when they were playing and the and... way he's, uh, the uh the solly was <laughs> yelling at him that was that was funny um but i i don't know i actually yeah i guess it would be that interaction i think that would probably be my my favorite scene, I suppose. Okay. It was well, actually that's legitimately funny. We're making progress here. When I'm done with you, you're going to be an angel fan. You're going to have the poster yeah. hanging up in your background. Yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna get you the poster for Christmas this yeah. year. No. You think my wife will let me put that <laughs> up in the house? Like, no, I don't want it. Uh, so IMDB gave it a 5. Uh, how the hell did they give it a 5.8 out of 10? Rotten Tomatoes, 44% out of 10. Letterbox, 3.1 out of 5. I'm sorry, I just, I don't, I don't know. I just, it wasn't entertaining. Um, next week, oh boy, we'll be covering the 20th anniversary of the butterfly effect. What would have happened if we didn't watch this movie this week? Let's find out. Starring Ashton Kutcher, Amy Smart. <laughs> It's been a long time since I've seen the butterfly effect. I'm looking forward to this. I don't think I've ever seen it. Really? Yeah. Never really interested me. Well, next week you'll see it. We got we got some good stuff coming up. So Justin yeah, will be yeah. back to his normal happy self in about two weeks. No, I think it's better when I don't like the movies. <laughs> yeah. So my whole purpose of picking Angel was to irritate you this week. It wasn't that. It wasn't. Didn't have enough to keep me going. It was just bad. It was just, just bad. Well, that's a wrap, folks. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Before we go, you should find us on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Podcasts, Anchor, Google Podcasts, and most places you listen to your podcasts, unless you, you know, already are listening to us on a podcast, then you should go to YouTube. Yeah, don't forget to follow us on social media and stay up to date on future episodes and join the conversation. You can find us on Twitter slash X at the Movie Bar Pod. 
and on Instagram at Movie Bar Podcast, and on YouTube and TikTok at the Movie Bar Pod, and at the Movie Bar Podcast on Facebook. Tag us, share your favorite movie moments, and suggest films you want us to cover next. And for more about the show, visit our website at www.moviebarpod.com. Have a film suggestion? Let's just want to say, toodles! Drop us an email at the movie bar at outlook.com. Until oh, next time. Say hello. I say toodles. Toodles, okay. <laughs> Until next time, keep the popcorn popping and the rails rolling, and we will catch you next week on the feature presentation presented by the movie bar. Bye.